since my last Edgeware tutorial, I got a lot of comments basically just saying stuff is broken and hasn't been working for a while because they've updated things in Blender and things look a little bit different. Some of the nodes are renamed, so I wanted to make an updated tutorial. This is really useful for texturing sci-fi spaceships or making holograms if you want to just highlight edges really easily. What we're mostly going to be making use of here is the bevel node. And the reason for that is because the bevel node, if you look closely at it, seems to be aware of where the edges on your mesh are because that's how it smooths out the normals. But the problem is, and this is going to be point number one, is that you can't use this with Eevee. Okay, this is a cycles only node. You'll notice the bevel node does nothing in Eevee. And even if you're in cycles, if you're in the, v the uh, material preview viewport shading mode, that's just a shortcut to using Eevee basically for your preview. It's not going to work here either. So for you to see this effect, you have to be in cycles and you have to be in the fully rendered path traced viewport, okay? So the effect itself is really straightforward. All we're going to do is we're going to take our bevel. We might increase the samples a little bit just to keep it smooth as we're trying to do color ramping and stuff. And we're just going to add in a geometry node. Now what we want, because this geometry node has a normal output similar to the normal output of the bevel, and in fact it looks the same as the bevel put all the way down to zero, we want to get the difference between this bevel and the normal output of the geometry node, because the only difference between these two is the edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a mix color node. We can plug these two in. It doesn't matter which socket they're in. We're going to change the factor all the way up to one and change the uh, blend mode from mix to difference. There it is. So we're going to get this crazy colored output. Um, but the problem is with colored out with like colors and stuff like that, sometimes they don't work super well as factors. So we'll use a separate color node, set it to hue, saturation, and value. And we're just going to preview the value out. And that is going to give us basically our edgeware edge detection setup. Now, if we want to, we can come in here and color ramp it. If we want to make this edge a little bit harder. It's pretty soft by default, so you can set that up however you want. But one issue that we're getting at the moment is we're getting both edges, like these outer edges are being highlighted and these inner edges are being highlighted. If you don't want that, we can just use ambient occlusion because ambient occlusion is kind of doing the opposite of what the bevel node is doing. It's detecting basically these inside edges. So if we just take the distance and bring it down a lot so that it's so that it's uh, relatively tight. We can add in a color ramp here. And we're actually gonna set this to constant. We'll actually set this to constant as well. And what we're gonna try and do is basically just make sure these are roughly similar. We want the ambient occlusion to just overshadow our inner edgeware. And then we'll add in another mixed color. Actually, let's do a math node. So if you just type in multiply and take a math multiply node, and we'll just multiply these two over each other. And you can see we can still see a little bit of our inner edge wear. So maybe we'll adjust our color ramps. And then increase the distance in the ambient occlusion node. That's going to cut out all of those inner edges. So we're left only with the outer edges. Now a couple of tips. Uh, you'll notice if the samples are set lower, this whole effect will perform faster. You'll be able to preview everything in the viewport a lot more easily. But the effect isn't going to be like, it's going to be a little bit more vague. You can see this inner edge is still showing up, even though it's a little bit darker, it's still definitely showing up. So if you want a more well-defined and also our edges are becoming more soft, like you can see we're using color ramp set, set to constant, but we're still getting these uh, soft edges. So if you turn up the samples, we're going to get harder edges and effects like this. Uh, using the ambient occlusion to take out these crevices is going to be more defined, but we're going to get slower uh, viewport performance. So the solution to that is basically just to bake your textures. But other than that, this is a really handy effect. You can even combine it with like textures. If you use like noise textures or grunge textures, we can use this as the radius for our bevel. We can get these like more uneven edges. And then this way, if we bring down the minimum a lot more. 
this could be used as a nice like factor if you want to add like the effect of paint chipping away at the edges of a metallic object this could be a really good basis for creating that kind of an effect so anyways this is just a really nice versatile effect it's useful for a lot of things this technique is the backbone behind the edge wear effect in my uh free spaceship texturing nodes so if you've download or downloaded or used those um this is basically what's happening under the hood is it's just this right here this is the core of it um, and then there's just a couple of extra controls on top of that. If you're interested in downloading those tools and seeing what they can do, you can click on this video on the screen right now. It's just a nice texturing tutorial using the tools. Like I said, they're completely free. You could just grab them, download them, use them. They look really good. You know, it's up to you though. You don't have to. I see you're eyeing that sidebar. There's probably a cool video that you're looking at. They're going to watch next. But you know, you might consider watching mine. Oh, and also subscribe.